Hello, Clayton Hello. Jacobson. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? I'm well, really good. Thank welcome, you very much. welcome to um, Hush Hush Biz, and um, and we have to say congratulations on your, you know, new film that you have directed, as well as your acting in it, which is Brothers Nest. Never heard of it. Oh, really? Oh now, no, I have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean to freak you. No, uh, no, uh, yeah, no. Well, thank you very much. You know, I'm I'm happy to be here. It's uh, it's we're we're just we just I, I wish Shane was here with me, my dear bro. Yeah. But you'll have to uh, excuse the, the poor bugger because he is he's hurt his ankle. And when I say hurt his ankle, I don't mean like he scratched it. He snapped the Achilles tendon. Oh bugger. Yeah. So that was like a gun. Anyone that's had, have you ever had that happen to you? Never. Because apparently, if you. Anyone that's had that happen that says it's one of three things. that either, You either think you've been shot, you either know that it's the Achilles tendon, or you feel that someone has actually run up behind you and hit you with a baseball bat. And he has two blood clots and deep vein thrombosis. Either that, or he just can't be bothered coming on the tour. Uh, but I know, it's the, I know it's the former. Because um, what he has been doing is uh, going around on the bus with us. He's cre we've created a bus tour, but of course it, we couldn't get him out here to Brizzy. It's too hard. Oh, yeah. so you are the champion that's standing in right now. Oh, and, yeah. you know, and look, tell us about the film, you know, to start with, you know, um, how did it come about? Where, how did the scripts come in? And mm -hmm. Well, it was, um, uh, Jamie Brown is a Melbourne writer who uh, uh, I've known for many years. I actually sort of slightly related to him. And uh, we have worked on a couple of projects together. And he was working on one particular film with me and he's staying at my house. And he has a lot, I, I live about 50 minutes north of Melbourne and we're on six acres, beautiful spot, but it's a little remote, just a little bit remote. And it tends to freak city people out when they come and stay with us because they're convinced they're not going to be there in the morning. So he <laughs> clearly had one of those experiences, didn't tell me about it. And then six months later said, look, I've got this story that I've written f to be shot at your house and for you and your brother, are you interested? And I went, Really? And they, he literally created a whole script, along with another writer, Chris Parlow, who's a, a good friend of mine, which was a really wonderful gift. And this script, you know, the characters were called Clay and Shane. And I read this thing and I went, what a twisted mind you had. What, where did all this come from? They said, the day I slept at your house. And I went, oh, wow. okay. So that's kind of the genesis of it. And then we, uh, it all, you know, that was about a year or it was just, on, just under two years ago. And then we, um, we, we developed it all from there. How disturbing and dark. It was, but sort of strangely, <laughs> um, strangely kind of, uh, you know. To, it meant to be. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it's, look, it's, it's, it, it's very, uh, it's, it's lovely to have someone say they've written a film. It's not yeah. quite so lovely when you read it and realise it's about two brothers plotting to murder <clears> someone. <throat> yeah. But, um, but you know, go figure. He'd spent more time with me than most, so who mm. am I to complain? But, it, mm. but also, as a writer, he has a very twisted sense of humour. He wrote The Mule. Uh, he's uh, he, he has a, a dark sort of side to him, and this certainly fed into that. And look, when Shane and I both read it, we immediately got on a serious note, got very excited because we thought this is a great follow up to Kenny. You know, it's, yeah. it's unlike it's unlike Kenny, and yet it's about family values, yeah. which we really love. Yeah. So, being were you pinned as the director from the start or did you put well, your hand Well, that was how up? it was presented to me. Well, yeah, God well. knows, you know, how many hundreds of people he'd asked before me. But, you know, the script did, it, it said Clay and Shane and he mm. told me that it was, so I, I had no no cause to doubt him. Mm. And, uh, but I, 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 I took to it with great gusto and Shane mm. said, look, let's lock it in, let's make this happen. Okay. And uh, so Shane gave me some dates that he was available and that, that actually was the beginning of it happening because I thought, great, now I've got a deadline. Now we've got something to work towards. Yep. Yeah. How long did it take you to shoot the film? To shoot the film was five weeks. Okay. Five weeks. That's yeah. We shot good. the whole film in sequence too, which people don't don't always wow, do. Normally that's films are, normally things are done totally yeah. out of sequence. You know, you, yeah. you know, one day you're walking in a room saying, G'day, Margaret and then the next scene they're going, Okay, this is when you you know, walk in and you drive over her with the car and, right. and you go, Well, I just said hello to her. Well, why is the next scene? You, yeah. know, you go, Well, I'm sorry, this is the way it works because we can only be in this one spot you know. Yeah. And as an actor it can be very dis disorientating. Yes. But and it's also because you're going to so many different locations. But the great mm. thing about this film is we were at one location mm. for five weeks, a very, very visual, beautiful, cinematic sort of uh, farm mm. uh, farm that we're at. Mm. And I thought, well, look, 
we're at one location, I think we're in a position where we can probably shoot this in sequence. And it'll help the performances too, because it'll actually feel like it's all playing out. The difficulty is the whole film takes place over one day. So we had to make five weeks feel like one day. And that was tricky. That was tricky. I think it was well done, though. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you, you really... It, it, yeah, it flowed. We, it, we, uh, we, we did something that I haven't seen before. Um, we worked out some colour charts and lighting uh, charts for the different times of day. That's normal. That's what everyone does. But what, what I did was I went through the entire script and I actually attributed a time of day next to every scene. Mm. So you could literally, um, and so what we did is we broke the the visual look of the film into four. So mm. there was early morning, then then um, morning, then afternoon, and then night, late mm. afternoon and night. And we never wanted midday sun. We always wanted the sun to be low where it's a bit more dramatic, a bit more interesting. So we had four, essentially four main looks. And then I just attributed what time of day would be for each of those four looks. And then we just, yeah, we marked up every scene as this is 11.33. And so anyone on the film could look at a scene and, wow. and then cross and then correlate that to our, our charts. And uh, it, made, it, you know, it made things a lot easier. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. You know, it's sort of uh, filmmaking. Yeah. And also the other thing was for, for a good deal of the film, we're wearing these chemical suits. And that yes. was also a great asset. For a couple of reasons. Number one, we don't have to have 150 costume changes. Um, mm. And number two, it's, a, it's a, an extremely inexpensive costume to wear. If the film does well, people can go to dress-ups. It'll only cost them $5.50 to, to, to look like a Jacobson. Which <laughs> well, is kind of sad, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you said that. I did say that. <laughs> You guys are... Yeah. Shane looks about $8.50 to look like Shane. Me, $5.27. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the, going to Shane, you know, how exciting is it for you to come back and work with him? It was great. I, I was a little nervous, to be honest, because um, it has been such a long time since... I mean, we've done little things before with yeah. each other. We did Kenny's World. That was great fun. Yeah. Um, and then we did a thing called Morty Coots, which was like a, a web series. Yeah, but then there was this long period where we didn't do anything at all, and um, and you know, and he's worked with some pretty amazing talent in, Ooh, yeah. in between. So yeah. you know, Shane has got his chops up, and and he's now a star. And yeah. so I just thought, you know, is he going to be an asshole? Now mm. am I going am I going to cop the petulant you know younger brother where he just won't do anything that the older brother says? Am I going to have to beat him around the head with a stick? You know, and um, the truth of the matter is nothing could be further from the truth. I've never hit my brother around the head with... Have you seen him? He's bigger than me. I can't hit him. Just, yeah, I have seen you know, him. You can't kill him with an axe, you know. yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I was... Uh, I was... There was a part of me that thought, look, you know, will we get along? Um, and we stayed together in a um, reconditioned um, shipping container with my son, who was 21 at the time. Mm-hmm. And we had a ball. Shane would cook me meals at night, cook roasts for me at night while I was preparing the next day's wow. uh, scenes. Wow. And we, I didn't think it was possible, I really didn't, because we, I adore him. But when the film finished, we, we were closer. We, 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 you, know, you, you, you wouldn't know that watching the movie. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But, um, it, oh, no, no, not in the movie. <laughs> not in the movie, no. <laughs> Mind you, the boys do love each other in the film. They do, they, there is brotherly love there. It's just horribly distorted. Mm. Mm. Well, we we obviously it's, can't talk too much about it because it's no, spoilers. Don't want to get, don't want yeah, spoilers, no. yeah, no spoilers no, in no, this. No. It's you know we want everyone to go and see yeah. this yeah, yeah. and support Australian films, particularly. Thank you, Amen. Yes. Well, I've got to say the casting of the others are fantastic. Yeah. You've got some really good names there. Um, I love Kim that everyone Gindel. says that. You know, because yeah. you hope you, you hope you're putting a great cast. Yeah. Together, you yeah. Know? So I, I'm sorry I interrupted, but I just no, I do love no. that people are loving the cast. You know? Well, ser- you, know? you know, even um, Sarah Snook, oh, yes. one of them. You know, amazing. She's a chameleon. She, she, she is looks different in everything she does. She. Yeah. She, when she turned up for a re- rehearsal to just, you know, talk about the, the I, I barely recognised her. Um, mm. But she is just this wonderful, um, very versatile performer. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, she had a tough gig in this. She had to sort of bring the audience back to a, po- a, a, a place where they could leave the cinema and feel good about yeah. themselves. Yeah. Um, Kim Gingell, my God. Oh, I mean, hey, amazing. Yeah. He's one of my favourite I mean, actors I, I of all, we've, all we've, all we've laughed a lot. At yeah. and with Kim, 
Yeah. But I think people are going to really enjoy watching him yeah. in this dramatic role. Yep, uh, absolutely. Because he's really great in this. And, and Lynette Curran. Yes, another classical actress. Yeah, I mean, like, you look at her history and, mm. you know, the body of her work. And mm. um, it was an honour to work with, with those guys. And, mm. and Lynette so got it and was... I can't say her name without sort of smiling because mm. when we sat down to first talk about the film, she was so gracious and so giving in talking about her own experiences and what mm. what she would bring to the role. And, and uh, t you know, I called them beautiful little gems and gifts that the actors kept giving me. You know, the little, you know, you hope as a director that you're going to get what you want, that you the things that you have on the script that you hope they will bring bring to life. Mm. But more than anything else, you're hoping that they will they'll bring something fresh, something surprising, something that you haven't asked for, something that might come out of the ether or the, mm. the darkest, deepest part of their soul, you don't know. Mm. And that was certainly the case for not only Shane, but um, definitely for, for Kim and, and, and the others. Uh, it, was, um, it was a joy to watch. It was great, great fun. And they weren't, you know, it was great for the crew too, because, you know, for the first third of the film, it's just two fat guys in orange suits talking to each other. Yeah. And um, we, we actually got concerned because when the other actors turned up, the crew were just so excited because suddenly they had someone different to look at. Visitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, it was, it was, it was, we, I'm very, very, I'm indebted to them. Fantastic. Well, I've, I'd like to sort of finish off um, our time together, Peyton, and ask you in terms of you being in this business for yeah. a long time now, um, what is your best advice to give to filmmakers, especially ones that are coming in right now? What would you advise them, especially in a... Look, it's a thing that everyone says, and I've seen a lot of articles recently sort of complaining about about filmmakers always saying the same thing, just go out and do it. Yeah. Um, but it is actually the thing to say because it's never been easier to make films. You're, you're filming now with your phone. I couldn't do that yes, 20 years ago. that's right. And I couldn't get access to a camera that would be as good as what you're yes. probably getting off that image. Yes. Um, it, you learn so much about directing through doing the job, not talking about how you're going to do the job. Yeah. And, and, and I, I just think, I, I personally think do, do lots of short films because you can experiment with genre. Yes. And it takes a while to work out what the thematics are that interest you as a human being. Yeah. Our, our childhood and our upbringing is all different. We're all brought up differently, and we have leanings, and we, we tend to love and like things differently to one another, mm. based on those early influences. Mm. Mm. So what tends to happen, it took me a while, I, I did a number of short films in different genres, and it actually took an outsider that said to me, it's interesting, Clay, you seem to have a, a, an interest in, in human you know, the humanity of a moment. You, you seem to want to dig in deeper to the, the soul. It's not so much about plot with you. It seems to be more about... And until it had actually been said to me, I didn't realise that. Mm. And, uh, and then when I look back at all the films I've made, I realised the ones that I had liked and the ones that had, that had gone well were, were actually saying something about the human condition that wasn't just plot-driven. It yeah. was character-based. Okay. So do e that. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. And we wish you all the best with the film. Thank you From so Hush much. Hush Biz. And um, say hi to Shane. I and will. I will. I hope his ankle gets... He's broke mended. his toe too, the bastard. Oh, bugger. Yeah, his other foot. That's not, I mean, I'm not afraid oh, to ring God. him. I said to him, I'll be taking him home to his girlfriend in bits. There'll just be this box of parts. Hopefully not. Oops. <laughs> hope not. <laughs> Thank you, Clayton. Thank you. It was so lovely to talk to Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thanks.